All right, ladies and gentlemen, do I have a treat for you today. Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be looking at a really troll, but quite awesome and epic build, in my opinion. With Warhammer 3 using the Beastmen, it is a full Minotaur army. There is not a single unit in this army that is not a Minotaur. I mean, Doombull, I guess, has a different term, but he's a Minotaur. Doombull all the different variants of minotaurs and that is the entire army this actually comes to about like 50 gold less than a normal land battle uh, army will cost but it is three variants of each we did bring the butchers of kalkengard and i believe we took nothing on the doom bowl yeah he's completely naked as of items which is fine regardless uh i do not recommend this in any kind of competitive sense however it has a lot more teeth than you might want to give it credit for. So, Blood Greed has been changed in Game 3. It now actually is scaling damage, pretty much, um, for for the amount of kills you get. It's very cornate, I guess. Uh, basically, once they get to 200 kills, I'm pretty sure that's the max, they're going to have a bonus of 16 melee attack, 15% more charge bonus, which doesn't matter too much at that point, and then 20% armor piercing. And that is not small. That's relatively big, actually. 16 melee attack especially puts, for example, these Minotaurs with shields up to, I want to say 50, yeah, 50 melee attack, which is saying something. That's without any chevrons they probably will most likely earn during uh, the battle getting those kills. So, today we have an opponent that I think will do at least design-wise very well into these Minotaurs. As you can see, there's some cannon shots coming around. This is the Vampire Coast. Uh, it is a very small kind of box build going on. We have plenty of ranged items. We have the Carronades, we have Shade Wraith Gunners, uh, the Deck Gunners, goodness, and an actual decent amount of pole arms. I was quite surprised when I saw the pole arms, and I gotta say, I started sweating when I saw the amount of pole arms there were. This is all sitting in the back line, so I guess he was really expecting quite a big flank there. Count Noctilus himself up on his. Oh gosh, what is it called? It's like a Carnifex or something. <laughs> Regardless, um, <clears throat> pretty pretty decent box build here for the Vampire Counts. Open and fire, getting some early damage onto Butchers of Kalkengard, which are the most expensive unit. And the, I think the big reason why this actually can relatively kind of work in Warhammer 3 is, number one, all of these Minotaurs are way cheaper than they were in Game 2. Very, very cheap in comparison. Especially, I mean, Butcher's of Kalkengard and Great Weapons. And obviously with the DLC, we did get Doom Bowls, which is another super duper big um, addition when you're trying to make a full Minotaur army. And right now, pretty much, it's very obvious what we're going for. Just quick front, live, uh, front line cave in. We are going to avoid these pole arms kind of as much as we possibly can. We don't necessarily want to engage them right away. We're bringing around these Great Weapons to come and hit the Carronades in the back. And this build for Beastmen, I would suggest taking against probably a different opponent. The Vampire Counts do not have a lot of large monsters, so your Minotaur Great Weapons are not going to be used very much. And as you can see, we're already getting some Minotaurs routed off. So despite the fact that they can get some Immune to Psychology out of this uh, Blood Greed... I mean, the Immune to Psychology probably wasn't the reason they had routed there. Not 100% sure. That's really high leadership. I'm not sure why they ran so quick. But we've melted pretty much all of the zombie pirate deckhand mob, which is looking real, real good for us. Lots of magic coming down from the Vampire Coast player, but there's really no good targets. Um, the thing is, the Minotaurs were all monstrous infantry, so there's not like infantry you can absolutely blast. But as you can see, these pull arms are just putting an absolute hurt on the Minotaurs. Oh, tons of Minotaurs are routing off the edges. I genuinely thought this game is just a wrap, but we do a lot better than I expect, so. Keep watching, you may get surprised. Some more Minotaur Great Weapons are routing off on that side. A bunch of units are coming back. Let's see if we can find the Butchers of Kalkengard. Where are they at? Oh, they're right here. Super low model count, which is really bad for them. They're not going to get near as much regen in that said situation. Doom Bowl here is taking on a ton of damage as he's getting pretty much shellacked by Noctilus there. He does a nice animation rolling out of the way, so... Not too bad, and to be honest, Bounce of Power is not too far in the opponent's direction so far, and we've pretty much been able to shut down all of his backline, which isn't, I think, the most important thing, as uh, 
he didn't have too much ranged, and there was really no way that he was going to be able to protect us from that. The big concern, the big scare we have for us to deal with is these pull arms. Tons of pull arms. I think we have at least two or three Death Guard pull arms, which is really big, and then a bunch of the cheaper Deccan pull arm variants, which is really, really good. We're actually starting to kind of pull back just a little bit here. As you can see, this Doom Bowl is putting on the hurt. And if I can grab right here, Minotaur's Great Weapons, 150 kills just about. And look at the melee attack on this guy. I'm pretty sure they start at 34 base. So already well over 10 melee attack earned on this single unit with his Chevron and, and obviously that Blood Greed passive. And they're actually grinding out really hard. These Death Guard pull arms are basically untouched. Um, same with the Bloody Reaver. I mean, they're really high HP, but we're actually pulling it back quite well here. As you can see, there are so many Minotaurs. They just don't have enough to kill it. Count Noctilus is starting to get absolutely wrecked by these Minotaur Great Weapons, as well as the Doom Bolt pitching in. Coming in with a nice rear charge, the Death Guard pull arms are scattered all about, trying to defend Count Noctilus as much as possible. But there are just so many Minotaur models in this goon squad. It is, it's too much to handle. Balance of power is swinging right back into our favor. And what looked like a pretty bad situation, given the fact that they had so many full arms and a decent amount of range to open up with, we, I am genuinely impressed with the performance I've had uh, using this army. There is no magic in this army. So I'm really trolling quite a bit. I'm stabbing myself in the knee here, but I absolutely loved it. I don't know. If maybe it's a little too broken, the fact that you can get like three of each variant for the Minotaurs. We did pick up a win here. I played, I think, one other match, which I also got a win on. But that one felt like a little bit of a fluke. I think I just lucked in uh, pretty much just the army comp with that win. So not showcasing that one here. But as you can see, even against an army that was pretty much had a decent amount of dedicated anti-large, couple ranged weapons, both, yeah, two pull arm units from the Depth Guard and then a bunch of pull arms. Well, only three pull arm zombie deckhands in the back. So maybe the big benefit for us was the fact that his front line was just the zombie pirate deckhands and nothing anti large, nothing that could really hold us in place. So maybe that worked out. I think probably some animated hulks and, and something of that nature might have helped him hold the line a little bit better. But regardless. Very impressed. Um, as you can see, tons of good kills on these Minotaurs. These ones that got near 200 or surpassing 200 were basically getting that full buff. And as you can see, they have a ton of HP, or at least a large model count. They probably had less HP than this, but they were still fighting for, for quite a bit. So you can actually get relative a relative amount of value out of that passive, that Blood Greed passive, which is really, really cool. So, bit of a, a troll build today bit of a fast battle regardless i thought it was super duper cool the fact that unit caps lets you to do this at the moment it lets you take up to what is this nine yeah nine minotaurs plus a uh, minotaur lord so this is an actual permit like most perfect minotaur or minibus build you can possibly get there's literally nothing in here that isn't a minotaur and hey it actually slaps at least Maybe on the lower end of things. If I were to go up against a, probably a better player, especially if they knew what I was bringing, I don't think I'd have near the same result. Regardless, still fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, sorry for the short vid and the fact that, you know, all my videos are about a week apart. I don't know that I'll improve on that, honestly. It seems to be the comfort is just posting once a week. So hopefully I can try and get some different content out there. This is kind of a an attempt to throw a little bit of fun, more fun variety in there. I think video like posting rate might pick up a little bit when we actually get some content maybe like a patch or heavens i'd kill for a dlc but right now uh warhammer is struggling to keep i think a lot of our attention so regardless thanks for watching thanks for sticking around hopefully you did enjoy that if you want to post any replays or give me something to cast i do have a discord down in the uh, description so feel free to do that and thanks again for watching i'll talk to you later